You know anything about the hyena? No. That about I... the fact it gives birth through what's a sort of a pseudo penis, <laughs> of which the birth canal is only an inch across, a design that frequently suffocates the babies and or kills the mother. <laughs> okay. He had talked about anatomy being evidence for evolution. Yeah, I didn't say that. What, you, you didn't say that anatomy is evidence for evolution? Funny enough, I didn't say that anatomy is just straight up evidence for evolution. What I was talking about is the laryngeal nerve. Now, Hovind spends, I'm not joking, 10 minutes on a rant now about the human eye. Yeah, it's going to get So I just, I just want to really get this on the table. In fact, you know what? I'll just play the clip so you can see the point I was making. But bear in mind that this doesn't make it into his video. There's a 10-minute break. Yeah, it's not going to be there for a while yet. Without getting too technical, this nerve runs from the brain to the voice box, which should be a distance of a few inches. But instead, it goes down into the chest, loops around a main artery, and then goes back up to the voice box which in the case of the giraffe results in a 15-foot detour. So that's the point I was illustrating. I was saying that we have this nerve, and it makes sense if it evolved in fish because it's the quickest pathway to get there. And then we evolved, you know, mammals coming from fish, and, and you see this really weird design where it comes... It needs to go from here to about here. And what it does is it comes down, all the way down the neck, loops around the main artery, and then goes all the way back up. <laughs> What intelligent designer would do this? Well, f- what probably one of these two, to be honest. A 15 <laughs> foot detour in a giraffe's neck. So I put together just a couple things. If you think anatomy, I thought he, maybe I already missed him using that word here. If you think anatomy is evidence for evolution, let's see here. The human eyeball is really complex. Every single cell in your body is complex, but the eyeball is amazing. <laughs> Okay, when you study just the human eye, Psalm 94, he that formed the ear shall he not hear, he that formed the eye shall he not see. You know how many different kinds of eyes there are? And they all serve the critter just fine. So I just want to pause this lecture of how amazing the eye is and how it's obviously made by a god mm. being lectured to us from someone wearing glasses. To and they serve everyone, including myself, perfectly fine. Perfectly like fine. Blind, I love the glasses. Fine. Yeah, great. Um, let's talk about the eyes of moles because you have in moles eyes that are covered with skin and fur (laughs) the only thing it can see through them is the difference between light and dark yeah and it's like bearded dragons right i've got a bearded dragon wonderful creatures they have a sensitive spot on top of their head that's evolved so that they can just detect shadow it's a very basic eye it's like the first eyes that would have evolved and the reason they have it is so that when birds go above, they can go, right, there's a predator, I'm going to get under a rock, essentially. They get scared. Um, if you saw that in a mole, because all it needs to do is detect a bit of light and dark, then fair enough, that would be great. Yeah. But the fact that it's fully developed, well, it's, it's, it's it actually has degraded quite a bit, but wow. the fact that you actually have eyes, that makes much more sense if they are descended from land mammals that also have eyes, right? Yeah, and, and just to tangent a little bit here, because they always jump to eyes when they want to talk about how well designed something is. Steve, have you ever heard of the Babirusa? Lay it on us. No? Uh, it's, a, it's an Indonesian pig, and uh, this pig grows horns. And over time, that horn curls up and pierces its skull and into its brain and kills itself. Brilliant, right? Great design. What about the hyena? You know anything about the hyena? No. What about I... the fact it gives birth through what's a sort of a pseudo penis, <laughs> of which the birth canal is only an inch across, a design that frequently suffocates the babies and or kills the mother. Great design. It's like before... It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> Even in humans. Before the Enlightenment, before the scientific revolution, the the statistical likelihood that the mother and the child would die when giving birth was ridiculously high. That's the natural state of things. That's what God intended. 
brilliant. Death. <laughs> but but just just knowing a little bit about his other creatures that he designed, such as all of these horrible viruses, allowed us to emancipate ourselves from what he intended us to suffer through. Mm. He sounds like the devil. They're all designed. You know, Chevy designed some vehicles to be passenger cars, station wagons, minivans, trucks, all on a similar frame, I bet. Ken, you really like your car analogies, so allow me to give you one. Uh, comparing it to the mole, as Steve gave earlier. Uh, it'd be like designing a car with blackout curtains over the headlights. <laughs> uh, Genius. 